so I threw on my sage brush top from Friday Pattern Company I really love this top and I am on my way to Hobby Lobby I am looking for some denim fabric because I want to make a simplicity top one of the newest patterns that just came out and I think that it will be like adorable in denim so hopefully Hobby Lobby will have something and I wouldn't mind if it had a little stretch in it but we'll see I've been looking at the denim fabric and they don't have a whole lot but these are the fabrics that they do have and I pulled this one out because I think I'm gonna get this one it doesn't have any stretch but I like the fact that it's not too heavy so I think I'm gonna go with this one I purchased everything that I need to work on Simplicity 9605. I want to make view C, which is this view here that the model is wearing. I actually thought this little area right here was done by elastic thread. I thought it was kind of um, sheared, but it's not. What it's actually done with is single fold bias tape. So you take the single fold bias tape and you sew it down to the front and back of the top and then you take 3 8 inch wide elastic and you thread it through the bias tape so the bias tape is going to make a casing and then you thread the elastic through it and then that's how you get this little ruched area here. So I cut out all of the pieces and I did make a few minor adjustments. So this is the front piece and then you have a side front and back piece and then you have a back piece. I decided that I wanted the hem just to be a little bit longer. So as I was cutting out the pattern, I extended this bottom cut line by an inch and I did the same thing to the back. I forgot to do it on this piece so I made a note to myself to add one inch here as I'm cutting out the fabric and then for the ruffle I was looking at the ruffle here and I just decided I wanted to come out just a teeny bit longer here so as I was cutting out this piece I just left about I think this is about a half inch as I was cutting around the pattern so I just went over this line and that made this a little bit longer just a teeny bit these are the casing lines that are marked on each of these pieces and what you do is you take your single fold bias tape and you're going to cut five long pieces and they will extend across each of these pattern pieces and what you do is you're going to line the bias tape up to each one of these lines so you'll have five all the way up and then you're going to sew very close to the bottom edge very close to the top edge and then you'll be able to thread some elastic through the casing and then that will create the ruched look that you see here this is what the other side of the bias tape looks like so the elastic is going to go through this little groove here but it will be folded down this way so it will be tucked inside. This pattern is rated as easy and there is a piece that you have to cut out for the elastic so that you'll have the proper length that you need to thread through each piece of bias tape. And that is piece number 13, which is the elastic guide. So in order to mark the casing lines, I am going to just put little snips at each line. So here's a line here. So I'm just putting a snip there. Then I'm gonna do a snip here. On down all these snips for a casing markings. 
and I already did the same thing on this side. I just put little snips at each line and then I am going to, did I mark everything? Yeah, I did. I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to take a ruler and measure from this line over to the line on the opposite side. And then I'm going to just connect the lines with the ruler. I decided to go ahead and just put little marks on each line just so I can see them better. And then I'm going to just take a ruler and just line up like this mark over to the one on the opposite side. Here it is, gonna draw a line and then I'll make five lines and then I'll do this for each of the pieces that have the casings. Okay, so here are the lines marked and then I will flip this over, do the exact same thing on the opposite side. I am using ultra clean washable markers and I'm just going to go ahead and line everything up. And this should make it easy to see where the casings are. So I have to remember to do the same thing on the other pieces, which are the back and the side front and back piece. The front piece is cut on the fold. I did the same thing. I put the little marks where the casing is supposed to go. And then I'm going to open it up. I already put the marks on this side also. And I'm just gonna take this longer ruler and I'll do the same thing and just match up this end over to this end. Okay, so I'm almost done. Here are the marks for the front piece. Now I need to do the same thing for this piece here, number 12, and then I will be done with marking all the casing lines. So I have the front done. There are the darts. In the back, there is an opening, and then there's gonna be a thread loop and then a button. These are the ruffle pieces and the curved edge will have gathers and then the straight edge is supposed to be narrow hemmed but I've decided that I want this edge here to be frayed so I am not going to narrow hem it. What I plan to do is after I sew up the top I'll put it in the washing machine and then that should make the denim fray. So I pin the ruffles on and this is how it is looking so far. And now the next step is to just baste this sleeve ruffle on and it is gathered. And let me see if I can show what it should look like when it's all done. Let's see. Trying to be careful so the pins won't come out, but it should look something like that once it's all sewn on. I have basted the ruffle sleeves onto the top and now I'm working on step number five which is attaching the side pieces to the top. So I pinned one side down already and this is what it's looking like. So you kind of sandwich the ruffle between the side piece which is this side piece and the front of the top so you sandwich this in here place this on top there are some dots that you match this dot should match the dot on the opposite side and same at the top this dot should match and then now i just need to attach this side piece over to this side and line up the edges and pin everything down and then I will stitch this on and then I will do the same thing for the opposite side. So I just sewed down one of the sides and this is how it's looking and now I am going to go ahead and sew on the other side right here in this area. 
So I'm just going to take this piece and pin it the same way that I pinned the other side. Okay, so now that the side piece is attached to the front and the back, you can see the casing lines are pretty visible. So I will know exactly where to place the bias tape when I get to that part. So I finished the sleeve, the inside of the sleeve with this red bias tape. And now I am going to attach the facing to the top. So I have it pinned down. That's the back and this is the front and then I'm going to go ahead and sew this on. Okay, I'm ready to work on the casing. So I took the bias tape and I folded in one little edge of it and I am going to line this edge up to this side seam, just one of the side seams and I'm choosing this one. And then I'm going to tuck that down and then I'm going to make sure this folded edge is lined up to this casing line and I'm going to make sure it's lined up all the way across and I'm going to do this all around the whole top five times. <laughs> I bought a bunch of navy bias tape but I ended up just using some red and white that I had left over and it made it easier for me to see how close I was sewing to the edge of the bias tape. There is an opening that is left on each of these ends of the bias tape. This one looks a little messy but there's an opening and then you will take the elastic and you will thread it through the opening. I'll use a safety pin and then the directions suggest that you thread all of the elastic pieces through at the same time. I put safety pins on each one of the elastic pieces and then I'm going to stick them through the casing and then I am going to have to work the safety pin through. At the same time I'm going to try to pull all these through and then have them come out on the other end and then sew the elastic ends together. So this may take me a little while, so I'm going to go ahead and work on getting these elastic pieces through the casing. Seventy-five years later. I have literally been pulling this thread through here for over an hour and I'm still not done. I'm almost done. I have a little bit more to go. But yeah, this is taking a while. However, I peeked on the opposite side and it's looking like it's going to be really cute. But yes, this is definitely something that's taking a lot of time to do. One eternity later. I am finally done with this top. It took me forever to get this elastic thread through here. But this is it. All done. Here's the back. I did put the thread loop here and a button. And now I'm going to put this in the washing machine so that you know I can get the fray on the sleeve area here and then that will be it.